the formula for the eyeliners. KVD Beauty bought the rights to the eyeliner formula. If this isn't proof, it's all the same shit. <laughs> Dinosaur rips the roof off and he's sitting on the toilet like, and then it eats him, that's you. <laughs> the saga is now wrapped. Mario, I didn't think we were gonna get such a fast conclusion. The new Naked palette? We're not gonna agree. And you're gonna tell people, yeah, we're bringing back the faves. That formula gonna be different and they're not gonna disclose it. I love Hamburger Helper and I will, I, I will kill you. If last week wasn't my week, <laughs> this week is not your week. I'm dead I'm, inside. I'm, I'm, I didn't I'm realize here. we had Anna Wintour on the pod. Yes, Vogue and Anna, how many interns have you struck? <laughs> All of them. How you doing, you little, you little gay nugget? <laughs> <laughs> We're going through it. Someone keyed my fucking car. Your leased car. My I so I, I you leased just this car. Spent coin to get detailed. I lit. I'm you so, just did. I'm so. I know. But you know what? Let's have some fun. We're here. Let's just have some fun. If you're also having a bad week, let's uh, turn it around and have some fun. Turn the spin around. So, what are we talking about today, girl? We are talking about resurrected beauty brands. Yeah. That creaking I of know, the chair this is, yeah. was, was that my back or the chair uh, Yeah, either. I was waiting for your glasses to remove themselves. Yeah. We need to talk. Resurrected so, beauty brands. A, as of right now, mm-hmm. I have some news. Oh, this is the news you were going to tell yeah. me. Okay, so yeah, so we're going to touch on this. Kevin's been like okay. saving this for me. We're going to resurrect a beauty brands, purchase or pass. Let's take a break. And then you uh, yeah. have to drop this juice. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. So I don't want to do this person dirty because it's confidentiality okay. with Sephora. Okay, okay. Um, so Ooh, Sephora tea? Girl, the saga is now wrapped. Mario? Yes. <laughs> we're, we're back on uh, Kevin so Mario I, Ethereal Palette. I don't work for Sephora, so yes. I can say this, and yep. I did not sign anything. So yep. this was disclosed by somebody, and I will never reveal who it is because yes. they don't want their name being shared because they can get fired. Oh my God, are we going to be on trend mood? Yeah, we might be, girl. Yeah. Ethereal Eyes is coming back as of October 1st. You sack of <laughs> shit. I can do it. <laughs> you have called this for months. What the f- yeah. did I tell you? I, I know. I f- knew it. I didn't think we were going to get such a fast conclusion. And I got a DM. So I got a DM recently from this um, current employee who let me know it's on their hard launch list that they signed wow. off on, which I don't know if they signed off at the time, but then they signed off after. So it's like T girl that you told me before you had to sign off on it. Yes. So I was like, you know what? Good for f-ing you. Yes. But I was gagged because I knew it. So thank you to the loyal listeners <laughs> of Beautiful and Bothered because oh, wait, you are- so- you don't know this person is just a Sephora employee? Yeah, that DM me on Instagram. I'm obsessed with that. Yeah. We, I love that it's a beautiful and uh, bothered listener. That oh, yeah. is incredible. So thank you so much for proving me right. And honestly, proving my point. Yes. You're doing this just to I make know. money. Yeah. It is quite literally the the Scarcity. supply. Yeah, you're yeah. supply and demand. Totally. We, I took many marketing classes in yep. college and you, this is what we learned. Exactly. You create demand for a product and people are going to be salivating for I know. it. I'm salivating for it and I don't even think I'm going to like it. I know. So I know. am I going to go out and buy it? You bet your sweet bippy I will. Yeah. I'm going to go out and buy this fucking palette. Oh my God. Um, but yeah, as of October, I think October 1st, it launches in stores. October 1st, the Makeup by Mario Ethereal palette so, is coming back. So you sons of bitches. I f***ing knew, knew I'm it. so, this is where I'm like, be a little more slick about it. Totally. Or just be honest. Just be, be like, honest. Just make it permanent. People yeah. would buy it. Okay. And. This is being recorded. You already know this is going to come out before they announce it. Yeah. I bet you money, dollar bills. There will be a post where they're going to they're gonna stitch everybody's comment popping up. Like, we need it. We need it. We need it. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. And they're going to say, it's all going to clear out and go to white and be like, it's back. I know. October 1st. Like, I can... <laughs> like I can't. I'm saving this little clip of you saying that because when it does happen, we're gonna flash back in black and white. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. You already know, bitch. Yeah. You already wow. know. It's gonna be like, bring it back. We love it. I love this palette. It's gonna be all like five star reviews. Of As it. though that's why they brought it back. Yeah, and be like back by popular demand. And mark my words, I said it before. Back by popular demand. Yes, you did. We're gonna bring back ethereal. Eyes. Even though they've been making, they started manufacturing this the minute that one sold out, not knowing. And it's how been it sitting 
working in a fucking warehouse. You know how long makeup takes? Seriously? Yeah. This yeah. is ridiculous that you are stringing people along, pretending like it's just going to manifest out of nowhere. I know. But I'm excited. I know. I'm You're going to buy it I anyway. Like, I yeah. am. Of course I am. Yeah. And I do enjoy his products, which is like- You're the antidote and the poison. Quite literally. Yep. And I am I fall victim to the consumerism of it all because I do love- his products and yes. I love the launches and I we're also just makeup psychopaths. Yeah. There's so, not a shade in that palette you don't have, but it's just different. It's the, the whole thing about it. Yeah. 100. And we, then we can finally actually tell you guys what the tea on it is. Yeah. So, yeah. So I can't wait to try it. So I have That's been so I've funny been foaming at the mouth for a few days since I got this DM and I was like, who? Oh, wow. Mary Dugan. I, but you know what? Thank you so much for the uh, loyalty. Yeah. To Beautiful and bothered listeners. listeners, man. Even last week's episode, my God, I literally said in last week's episode, we, we kept it kind of nice and tight because I would, that was, I was my week from hell and I didn't want the edit to go crazy. And of course, when I uploaded it, uh, your mic cuts out halfway through and it was doing so well on YouTube. And it took me like three hours to completely like redo it, rehabilitate it, re-export it, put it on. And I can't, I mean, thank you guys so much to the Spotify and Apple podcast. People didn't have to deal with this because it was fixed by Monday, but Sunday, the YouTube loyal beautiful and bothered listeners you guys are amazing just all the yeah. comments of like i'm gonna watch it twice it's yeah. like so yeah and i don't think too and i just want to reiterate the point of how important it is uh the viewership and the liking of the videos and subscribing and telling all your and making sure that when people do watch the video that you're yes. signed in and you are logged in it makes all the difference oh for God. us being here every single week i know um and we don't just say it like you always hear for years like comment subscribe but it really does matter and oh, yeah. it pushes our videos so we could keep doing this more and more and more because honestly, and the reason that we love, we always talk about this, like we're both in like stressed out situations, whatever, but like, this is our favorite thing to do. Oh and God, I think yeah. why this is so important, not that we're, I'm tooting our horn, but nobody's this honest and crass about stuff that's coming on. This is why I wanted to do this, especially when you came on, because I'm so tired of the bullshit of every beauty influencer, every product that launches, they act like it's God's gift to the world. Like, yeah. it's just, I can't stand it anymore. And I feel like, uh, honestly, other than you and I, and then the Welsh twins, Robert and James Welsh are the only two other ones that make videos this honest, which we had Robert on and I want to get James on so bad. Maybe we could have both of them, like all four of us. <gasps> oh my I know. God. I got a DM James. Ooh, so that would, that would be, be so be fun. fun. Yeah. We love doing it. Thank you for telling Kevin that because you wrapped up the saga. So yeah. thank other, you so much. Yeah. So I feel like that's a pretty bow on that. And now totally. I could like toss that back in the closet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So <laughs> now we're going to talk about resurrected beauty brands because officially yeah. Mark Jacobs Beauty and KKW have been confirmed to come back. So let's mm -hmm. talk about whether they need to, how they're, how they are coming back, what the situation's going to be and diagnose this work. Let's take a break. Let's take a break. <laughs> All right, mama is refilled and ready yes. to spill. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. We also have uh, Ariana Grande Pink Cloud featured here. They're not sponsoring us. No. But uh, I got Kevin. I know with my product placement. I know. What like, is this? Michaela sunglasses and this. I know. We're really know. not sponsored. But, um, yes. but, uh, oh my God. Well, you got this yes, for me I got for, this for your my birthday. birthday. You had a, another travel of the original Cloud, which is yes. to die for. Oh, I was obsessed when I so smelled good. them. Going back to the other episode of you saying the intense, the like 2.0 Cloud, uh -huh. didn't smell, smell like anything. anything. It's and then the down. Cloud. So I love the Cloud and I love... The, this cloud pink this we were saying you describe fragrances so much better than me the original is like i find it to be a little more androgynous and masculine in a way that it has that bite to it where the cloud pink is the same but it's like a little you described it as airier yeah like it's airier, airy it's breathy slightly it's very, sweater but not i hate sweet fragrances it's not intense the, a touch like not at all it's too a much. whisper of like the sweet essence of like a whatever yes. the sweeter essence is it's not as cotton candy like as the first one yes because i i've sprayed the original mm. one one and like the cotton candy esque yeah. scent wears off and yes. it lingers more like androgynous, totally. like you're saying, kind of like in the same realm of a Mac Turquatic, where I used to believe it or not, mix Turquatic and the original Cloud. Yes, I used to spray them one on one wrist, one on the other, and like press. Yeah, and that would like love. Oh my god, it was weird how like an how aquatic they with went the together. sweet and the it was weird. So beautiful. Yeah. So if you have both, try those. Yeah. And if you've never tried Turquatic from Mac, run. I've never tried it. It is yeah. a gender neutral. I like, didn't even fragrance. know they made fragrances. Holy hell. And they had Turquatic for years. Then they had one 
it was like a pink version of it, which was amazing. And I still have the bottle somewhere. And then they came out with like a velvet teddy candy yum yum, like Mm -hmm. ones after like lipstick ones. Insane. Like, yeah. Gorgeous. I have a bunch of them at home. Every time you say turquoise, I just think of Alexis Michelle saying turquoise. That's all I'm hearing. They when were you're turquoise. That, turquoise. Why didn't you tell me I look like shit? Yeah. Because uh, it's a competition. Yeah. yeah. Um, she walked out in that f-ing, like rainbow with the arrow through her head. She looked like she was wearing that Charlotte Russe by rainbow. And she like snapped back at Michelle going, um, I, I rhinestoned that. I, I went I blind. Stoned. Yeah, I went blind stoning this. And, she, and Michelle's like, well, it still looks bad. I don't care. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter. Fierce. Yes. I, I got it from H&M. No more goddamn H&M. Yes. Like, oh, that man. energy. Oh, my God. So, uh, okay. So, KKW, Mark Jacobs. I feel like this is your tea. Yeah. Because you... So, we were talking about Mark Jacobs, mm-hmm. and you were saying... And so, Mark Jacobs... So, here's the thing. Let me give you a little rundown boots boots right yeah. now. So, Mark Jacobs originally was owned by Kendo. Kendo okay. was like the found... Like the, I'm not the founder, but the, yes. the owner of... Mark Jacobs Beauty. And Kendo, for those who don't know, Kendo is like an umbrella company like a L'Oreal, mm-hmm. Estee Lauder, uh, Cody, yeah. Shiseido, who own a bunch of stuff. Kendo owns all of the brands that are Sephora exclusive brands. So well, at the time, I mean, I don't know anymore. Yeah, but back then it was yeah. uh, it was KVD. Fenty Beauty, KVD, uh, Ula Mark Jacobs, Ula Hendrickson, and... Um, Bite. Bite. <laughs> yeah, Bite Beauty, R.I.P. Oh. Maybe. They're they use, still around, but I'm sure. You can only go to the lip lab. Yes. Like in like the major cities. Which and I go do want to do. You want to do it? Yes. It's in New York. It. I know. I always want to go to the bite lab. You can make a custom lip because you know I want to make a whore porn star nude. Our nude. Why have we never thought to do that? I know. I've thought about this all the time. Would you guys want to see that if we like vlogged Kevin and I going to the Bite Beauty Lab in New York City? You practically live in New York City. I'm two seconds away. Let's do like a vlog where we go make lipstick colors. I'm a little peeved right now that I, I have searched high and low. I, know. For I my thought perfect, about it all the time. Like, Every time I'm on like a brand trip in the city, I always want to like go to it, but I just, I don't know. I never ready for us. I don't want to go alone. And that's what I mean. I think you and I would be perfect. And it's, it's quite the expense. Yes. Let me tell you. So if you can ever swing it and because I'm bringing, I am bringing my Burberry, my retired Burberry velvet mat, uh, and I'm bringing Mac flesh pot, which they discontinued because that was mama's favorite. I am going to make their knuckles bleed matching it. Yes. Oh, they are going to, they're going to wish we never walked in the door. We'll give you, oh my God, let's do it. Let's vlog it. And we'll, you guys can see all about it. Yes. Oh my God. And then a little fun little uh, fact about Bite back in the day with the Sephora Pro team that when Bite was like really hot and everyone was like going to lip labs whatever there was a pro artist in New Jersey uh, Caroline who is such a fantastic makeup artist mm-hmm. and she was you know the pro team were like making their own lipsticks and they fell in love with her color and it became a permanent shade do you remember <gasps> Kava oh no Thistle I'm sorry Thistle it was yes. like Kava but a little more light a little more gray nude yes she made her perfect one that was like she's like I want Kava but lighter yes. and like like a little more less purple in it wow. and it became a top seller and it was her lipstick that she created with bite and they fell in love and they were like oh my god this is like something that we're missing can yeah. we like yeah yeah can it? we put this in the thing and so yeah. it was really really cool i was like wow that's so like, can you even buy their lipsticks online maybe i don't think so it's really only the last i think you can only go to the open you know what well, I mean? Well, that's the thing. I think their business of like brick and mortar is yeah. so good. I guess it's it's got to be. Well, and it's it's not cheap. Yes, I think it's probably. I want to say, don't quote me. I think it's like one hundred fifty dollars for the entire experience, which okay. isn't terrible. But that's so. But if cool. I can make a custom lipstick, well, and on top of it, if we can also film the process, like if they let us film and like mm. whatever, and do the whole thing to show you guys how it's made and stuff, that's just so cool to me. Yeah. I would love to do. So that. we should probably reach out to them. Yes. And yeah, yeah, ask yeah, yeah. Them if ask we them film. If maybe yes. Before we go, I'll ask them if we can film. Yeah. Okay, totally. Oh my god. Anyway, it would be amazing. Uh, Kendo. <laughs> so yeah, all the Kendo brands. So then, obviously, when KVD went to Ulta, Kendo was kind of like branching out where it's not just Sephora exclusive, but they owned Marc Jacobs. Let's fast forward to when Marc Jacobs was getting discontinued some time ago, a few years ago. Everything was getting discounted. Marc Jacobs Beauty was still a thing. Yes, because. It, Mark Jacobs Beauty was also the fragrances, yes. fragrances, but they were owned then by Cody. Okay, so was, was it that, separate? Was it, was oh, always separate? Yes. Okay, so so Mark Jacobs fragrances totally. were Cody, like the brand again, another umbrella brand. Umbrella brand was Cody. They owned Mark Jacobs fragrances 
always. Because Cody was actually really, a couple years ago, Cody was really only in the fragrance game. They yeah. only had fragrance. And when I worked for Burberry Beauty, which was owned by Shiseido at the time, at the time, Shiseido owned, obviously they had Shiseido, NARS, Laura Mercier, and Burberry Beauty. <laughs> yes. Burberry Beauty was the, they like treated it like shit. And they sold, sold it to Burberry Cody. Beauty because everyone considered Burberry to be such like this liability. No, oh. liability because it was not, it didn't, I'm not kidding you. They only sold me and Alyssa, who we've talked about on the pod, my favorite makeup artist ever. We worked with at Sephora. Her and I were the only Burberry freelancers in the U.S. We, because the only locations they had were Garden State Plaza in New Jersey. And then they had about maybe five places in the city, like Saks, et cetera. That was wow. the whole country. So it was so Shiseido didn't put any love into it because what I learned too, which drove me insane was Shiseido and maybe they've gotten their shit together since, but their manufacturing for the brands they owned worked on a cycle. So one month would be all NARS production refills. The next month, Laura Mercier, the next month, Shiseido, the next month, Burberry. So Burberry ran out of something. Mama, we weren't getting it back for five months. Because it wasn't even going to be restocked for five months because it was that. So, and Burberry was their last priority. So when Cody was dipping their toe into buying makeup brands, they bought Burberry Beauty. And then since I was technically a Shiseido employee, that's why I moved over to Laura Mercier. So they, yeah, who knows if they still own Burberry Beauty, but then that's when they started dipping their toe into it. So Because I've heard the rumblings that Burberry is coming back or it already has. It has. Because remember the foundations? With no dark shades. Yeah. Uh, oh my God. Which yes, is apparently yes, amazing. Yes, yes. I've heard nothing but good things, but I refuse to do it. I refuse to buy it and review it because they have not even dark, like I'm talking three medium dark to deep shades and then 20 light medium to light. So I'm like, girl, you have the money enough. Right. And exa- well, and especially if they're owned by one mm-hmm. of these bigger umbrella companies, you can invest the money. Yes. Because that, oh my God, their makeup. I remember Everyone where it was. It. That packaging was like Elite. exquisite. The unit carton that it's in. I was like, <gasps> the mother tan of God. with the, and it was like a ribbed, that, like yeah. textured box. And the mascara was to die for. I forget what it was called. The liquid lips The insane. liquid lips. And the they glosses. weren't liquid lips. And I'm going to give them credit. They kind of originated the velvet, not dried down Because then Tarte did it. Exactly. Of course, Tarte ripped them off. And I'll never forget, this is how bad you want behind the scenes of like uh, how bad Burberry Beauty and the team that worked for them was. I remember my East Coast manager or whatever was visiting the store when I was there. And I mainly only went to one location. Then Alyssa was the one that hopped around. Jeffrey Starr bought, because at the time he was the only one with the money, because they were like $26 each. And he bought the entire shade range because they didn't do PR. They didn't even have a social media nothing for Burberry Beauty. And so no one knew about it. And when people would come into Nordstrom where I was, they would always be like, Burberry is makeup. Like they had no idea. So Jeffrey had bought all of them, reviewed them and was obsessed with and loved them because they were unbelievable. They were great. And military red. Oh my God. Military red. You're bringing back memories because I'm fried. I don't remember any of them. Ox blood. Oh my God, Kevin. How do you remember? Ox blood, light nude, dark nude. Rosewood, I think, was another oh, one. Mary. Uh, yeah. Oh, Mary. Yeah. They were so amazing. And we sold out of them in two days because of Jeffrey. And the regional man or whatever the hell or title, who did the East Coast manager, comes in and says to me, she's like, yeah, I don't even know why. She's like, I can't believe these are doing so well. And I say, I'm like, you're the East Coast manager. You have to have your finger on the pulse. I go, yeah. I'm like, well, Jeffrey Starr bought them like two days ago, just posted his review of all of them two days ago. She's like SpongeBob's friend. She says- who? I'm like, which, okay, Stop. whatever. Maybe you don't. And I'm like, uh, Jeffrey Star, the biggest YouTuber right now. She goes, what do you mean on YouTube? She didn't even know. At this point, we're what? We're, we're eight years into the heyday. Had no idea makeup was even reviewed. And especially back then, YouTube was literally the place. was responsible for what sold and didn't sell. She had no idea. At that time, too. She was the East Coast manager. I had no idea. And that's when I was like, okay, I guess I got to 
go back to college. Just because this woman had a bachelor's degree, she's, or whatever, she's gotten to be the East Coast director of Burberry Beauty and has no <laughs> idea what's going on. So it was like, it was so sad. And then when it sold, it was like, yeah. But Cody, Mark Jacobs. Yeah, so Mark Jacobs now is owned. So I don't know if they sold, whatever the case is, or like Cody acquired them, whatever the case is. I don't mm-hmm. know the logistics of it. So now that they own the rights, mm-hmm. Because I was told by somebody that works within Sephora, yeah, the formula for the eyeliners, yes. Once the I guess the the patent was like yes. null and void, and they thought that this was done. Apparently, apparently, <laughs> um, apparently, KVD Beauty <gasps> bought the rights to the eyeliner formula, which Gag. the tattoo pencils <gasps> were. It was Are like now it was like behind the scenes tea because they can't say we bought the rights to this formula. They can't advertise that. But I heard through somebody at the back end of Sephora that they bought the rights to the old Marc Jacobs formula, hence the rebrand and hence the tattoo pencils were born. I was just wondering because I've been getting a lot of PR from KVD and it was like the eyeliners. And I remember I'm like, oh, like because their eyeliners are pretty solid, but... I was kind of curious why they were redoing it. And it's because the new KVD eyeliners are the old Marc Jacobs formula. Yeah. So they might have taken that formula and made their own tweaks. tweaks but they basically bought but the- But that base formula. They bought the recipe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They bought <gasps> the recipe and then apparently they had everything. If this isn't proof, it's all the same shit. <laughs> well, but that's the thing. Years ago, I went to a, a trade show in the city mm-hmm. and it was all about makeup manufacturing. And this guy legally- couldn't have told me this. Yes. But he hinted and he was like, oh, they make makeup, whatever. And because uh, yeah. there's only so many makeup labs. Because I was like, oh, like one day I like dreamt about owning my brand. And he was like, yeah, listen, like you got to come to us with a certain quantity for us to even consider you. Totally. And I said, oh, okay, like how big are we talking? He's like, well, some of our clients like get first come, first serve because or uh, the, the, uh, uh, better treatment. Uh, no, not better treatment, but they get priority. Pri- Thank you. I could not think of the word. They get priority because they're sold in Sephora. Yes. He's like one of our biggest clients. And the quantity they're ordering. They're not going to make goopy doop Kevin Benzaf makeup when no. when whatever's ma- they're placed ordering in an order six for million 50 units. million units. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And alluding to the fact that it was one of the biggest brands in Sephora, which mm. at the time it was like Urban Decay, Anastasia or something like that. Totally. It was years ago. So I was like, oh, wow, shit. That's crazy that this brand, this yeah. lab does this. And I was like, oh, well, fuck. And he was like, yeah, it could probably take up to a year to get like everything everything made for you. Wow. And I was like, oh, okay. I know. Because I was just kind of getting ideas because it fascinates me the behind the scenes of making a brand. Yes. Your packaging comes from one place. Your formula comes from another. You have to send the packaging to that yeah. plant to get it filled. Yes. And then they have to fill each color. Yes. And each time you switch a color, let's say you're doing 10 glosses. Yeah. You have to fill it all, clean the machine, deep clean the machine so I there know. is no residue. Yeah. And it could take up to like, a year, if not more, to manufacture a whole line of just gloss. And then forget if you want to make a palette, that's in a whole separate lab probably. Or like in a just- I'm getting excited now about the Bite Beauty Lab because I almost want to DM them and ask like how exactly if we can film because I would almost love to do it like a mini little like documentary style of like asking the person as many questions as possible about how lipstick's made, like yeah. almost in that way. Oh, that would be so fascinating. I've seen people do like their own like little like come with me to the Bite Beauty Lab. So I think they would be down for yes, it. Yes, yes. Um, and so but I mostly would, it's like their iPhone filming them like you know doing scraping the mat, scraping the whatever. But I want like yes, I want to see how many how much access we can get because I think that and I think they'd be on board for it because we're highlighting their whole store. Oh you know no, I mean? and even like, the whole process of how they're making two lipsticks. Yes. Imagine doing this for Sephora and mass quantities. Totally. And then even trying to, I think that's just, it's fascinating to me that it all has to get made and then shipped out. And it's like, it's amazing that if you come out with something and it doesn't move, it's like devastating because somebody worked on those colors and it's like, that's the scariest thing about merch. Like I can't tell you how many people, even with me, with the following that I have always asked me about merch, et cetera. I always joke around and let you guys let me know in the comments how you feel about this. But I laugh because I'm like, I, if, if I ever came out with merch, I would come out with beautiful and bothered merch before I would come out with my own merch because there's so much messiness with the YouTube algorithm where shorts and long form do not work together. If you're actually successful on one, it completely hurts the performance of the other because it's all the same watch time. It's all the same performance. So you got to realize all of my shorts, because they're short, have 
99% watch time, but a long video, let's say the best, you know, YouTube channel that has long form videos, even the best possible time for a long form successful channel is maybe about 80% watch time. So wow. the minute you post a long form video, it's judging it against the shorts performance. So it tanks even harder because my shorts do so well. So that's why even on this channel, I, and I don't know if you've noticed, I've kind of even stopped posting shorts to our beautiful and bothered YouTube channel because it hurts the long form episodes. So, because there's so much that goes in this, guys, it's insane. So I was explaining to the YouTube team, which I'm actually going to Switzerland in a couple weeks to meet uh, the YouTube shopping team in Switzerland. And I said to so many people that work there, blowing their minds, where I'm like, I won't come out with merch until you fix this problem because a long form audience is more loyal and they're more invested in you. We have a relationship in long form. Short form, you can't build a relationship with people. Yeah, so, I have 60 seconds to tell them my car got keyed and talk about kendo. That Exactly. And they're going to be like, what's a kendo? What the hell? Who are you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Burn why, it with fire! Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> ew, get the fag off the TV! Like, so, <laughs> but long form, it's like people get more invested in you. Like we were saying, like even with the people who watched last week's episode twice, when we had the audio issue. Oh, it's just my gosh, a different yes. kind of person. Yeah. So it's interesting in that regard. Yeah, totally. So Mark Jacobs. <laughs> Mark Jacobs, yes. We are the most scatterbrained mother. I love okay. it. Yeah. I'm with it. Um, totally. So yeah, Mark Jacobs is allegedly coming, coming back. back. And then So and I wonder what they what they still own as far as well, even formulas. There lies the issue. You said mama. that mama on the couch before we were filming, and I told you to shut your mouth because yeah. if that camera's rolling, it doesn't matter. So you're correct. Yeah. Um because let's say you know, what, what you're a diehard left? fan of yeah. the Velvet Noir mascara, which was <gasps> Unbelievable. Amazing. Unbelievable. And you already know, they say you're going to bring back favorites, but you know what the issue is for me is that you're going to come out with this makeup line and you're going to tell people, yeah, we're bringing back the faves. We're bringing back the faves, which leads shady, shady boots. They're going to, that formula going to be different and they're not going to disclose it. Those there it eyeliners is. are going to be chunky yet funky. And, and that's a shame because, I mean, I can't tell you, obviously this was when I was at Sephora with you, which was like 2015, 2016. That was it. Whenever anybody walked in the door and said, I want an eyeliner that does not move, it was Marc Jacobs. And then it's, a, you want colorful eyeliners? Great. They have options too. Absolutely. Because Urban Decay. No, girl. Yeah. Those Marc Jacobs ones were... Uh, that, Elite. It was a, I said it was a gel pot liner that they poured into a stick yes, and twisted it. Was. it. Yes, it, it was. Yes, it was. It was a true... There's other, like, Bobby Brown, like, gel pencils. I was yeah. like, no, the Marc Jacobs ones were... Girl. Elite. Black Noir. Yep. She didn't budge. They were so beautiful. They, the they had that red. The, oh, they had that, the like, red. red. They had I the, used to smudge it out and yes. do like that grungy, like vampy look. Oh my God. They had the God. green and they, they had the brown with like, oh, they had a, a matte shimmer. brown. It and then brown they had out. The, the brown with the gold yep. shimmer in it. Brown out. That oh. was my favorite because when you would smudge out brown out, yes. it was like the gold would come out more. Oh, they were so good as an eyeshadow base. Oh, it was amazing. God. Like a gel. Oh, it was yes, amazing. Incredible. I know. Incredible. So I, I do fear with this rebrand, I'm going to call it, and this relaunch and the re relaunch resurrection. Yeah. It is not going to be it. And I have I very, I have very low expectations. So if I get blown away, I'm going to be excited and I will be very yeah. happy that I'm blown away, but I'm not going into this with high hopes because I've been burned before by rebrands yeah. and it's been, I will boot. say this though. I feel like with Mark Jacobs beauty, they had a full line Mm -hmm. And really the only things that stood out were the eyeliners, the mascara, the bronzer. Oh, that bronzer? That bronzer. And then other than that, though, you remember that foundation? They had two. The, the OG foundation coverage. was spackle. She was dry as a bone. Full, full coverage. It was like, I Do never... you remember the one in the oval packaging that was the OG, OG? Yes. It was like the glass bottle that yeah. you would pull it off. That was more like glass skin, yes. very medium coverage, a little more dewy. Beautiful. But, but then nobody they came out appreciated with that. it back then because everyone was in the matte like full, full coverage, coverage Kardashian And then they KBD came out with that foundation. You, you pulled out the one. It was like a ball wand oh. that you would dot on. But it was too much. Like everyone was, was in the KVD era, the it was, locket it was foundation uh, cover effects the the full <gasps> coverage drops that you were supposed to mix, and people were using that just by itself. Just by itself, and I was like, yes. oh, that's not so. How you're supposed so to I use will it. say, I feel like they didn't really perfect anything but those three things. So right, so, so maybe this is the opportunity to because do so. honestly, it's like if you miss the eyeliners, we know it's KVD, KVD now. The mascara that was amazing. There's so many good mascaras though, yeah, and then. Bronzers, bronzer. Like, there's so many amazing bronzers. So, like, I don't know. Maybe they are in a clean slate that 
I'm be, I'd be interested to see what they do come out with now. Oh, and the lip glosses though, the Marc oh, Jacobs lip beautiful. glosses. Yeah, were f- Cherry I, Moon, Cherry Moon, that hot pink. Yeah, I hated. Oh my god, I hated the eyeshadow palettes, the little circles, those long things, and they were so expensive at the time. That was one of the first, like most forty nine dollars insane. Yeah, for back then we were like. <gasps> Forty nine dollars like, is it was the price of naked palettes back then. I know seven colors versus twelve, which naked palettes are boo boo. That I know. new one though, the new naked palette, we're not gonna agree. But yeah, I want nothing. It. The square little oh, I hate the rectangle pans. Packaging. I need a circle pan, especially for a guy. That I know little. Oh, and I like putting a brush in sideways to I like hate get it. That design, I do too. But the the payoff is nuts on this palette. Okay. <laughs> yeah, believe it when I see it. I want to. I want to play with it so bad. Let's take a break, and we're going to talk about KKW is allegedly coming back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, girl. So back in June, twenty twenty three. Yes, this year, just a few months ago, just a moment ago, just a moment ago, she was on Twitter. Yeah, and she confirmed that KKW Casey's cooking something, and it smells great. You smell that? It smells like um. Oh, I lost it. It smells like a type of meat. Cheesesteak? No, no, no. Um, no, no, no. Say it. Say it. Steak, pork, chicken, beef. Uh, ground beef. Ground beef. Oh. That was worth it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Ew. Hamburger Helper. Do you remember her? I love Hamburger Helper. And I will... I. I will kill you. You know why? Because you were rich. I never had... I was poor. I used to... I used to eat Hamburger Helper. Okay. It's I, disgusting. I, no, I love it. Cheeseburger hamburger helper is elite. Okay, I there was something about it though that it, it's you classist bastard. <laughs> well, because yeah. you know what's weird about it too is that I used to eat it all the time, and then I was craving it in my adult life, mm-hmm. and I had eaten it. And it, to mind you, fresh ground beef it doesn't yes. come with the ground. That's what beef. I mean. Yeah, and it's basically noodles, just whatever. cheese and noodles. I got so sick off of it. Oh, okay, honey, it was I mean, Niagara yeah. Falls. Whatever. I'm sure whatever's in that cheese sauce is questionable. Well, so I think that might have been the mystery behind the um totally the mystery of Niagara Falls that yeah. night because I was like I'm not I was like sweating. I'm not okay. Yeah, I was hot and I was cold. I was no, yes I and I was eat, no. I was no. up and I was down. I, I was wrong eat, that I was right. <laughs> I was wrong that I was right. I have an iron stomach because I live on Red Bull uh-huh. coffee. And just junk food, so sure. nothing really affects me. Why are we talking about Hamburger Helper KKW, KKW Beauty? Yeah, so she confirms that it's coming back probably under SKKN, so skin. Oh. Um, so it's coming under her skin line where they're, because she used to have fragrances, yeah. skincare, or maybe she's doing skincare now. And then she's going to, her. so all beauty related products are going to be under this label allegedly. Okay. They said later this year, which. I know, TikTok Mary, girl. It's later this year. Yeah, Where is it? I know. Girl, I know yes. it's in a warehouse. I know. I know, I know she is. Where is she, girl? Yes. So it'll be interesting to see if it'll be at Ulta again. I know. And oh, here we go again. And what I thought about earlier, they said that we're going to be bringing back some of your faves, iconic faves or whatever the verbiage she used, which again, different manufacturer. Who owns the formula? Mary. It I can't know. be the same thing. And don't. Bring back those boo boo contour sticks with that brush that would wipe it away. It looked like a dog dick. It did, it and that no product, no product. There was nothing in it. I know. And those lipstick packaging, like the clear. I was like, Essence yeah. Beauty has you quaking, girl. I know the clear plastic. I will say the only Ugh. thing I use. Well, Lee, I still have it. It is down to a nub. Is the lip liners, and oh. I think it was the one because uh, she had like nude one, point nude five, two. two, one point five, two, yeah. two point five. One was. The best lip liner I've ever used, but in all my sleuthing and scheming, I found an exact dupe. It's the LA Girl lip liner. Oh, LA Girl! I'm gonna grab it. I actually was looking at their lip liners the other day, and they're I, amazing. Was I? And it was like really beautiful because they have new lip liners. You know, they have like the bold vivids collection, and they just came out with nude nude lip liners. And I was in CVS, of course, buying shit that I didn't need to buy, as mm-hmm. we all do. And those LA Girl lip liners are just amazing. I've talked about them so much. LA Girl Perfect Precision uh, yes. lip liners. So this was the KKW, which as you can see, she's down to the nub. And this was Nude One. The other amazing nude shades in yeah. the LA Girl are just as good. The Bear is the exact dupe for that. Wow. But then there is also, and they're $2.99. That's crazy. <gasps> 
Whoa, that's pretty. Cafe, and the other one is sugar and spice, but they also have like colors. Let's take a lean in. I know. I want it. Can you even? I know. That one's cafe. Cafe. I, I literally am. I have, it. they're need my di- ride or die. I get so many. I literally have two cafes because sometimes I'll go into Ulta and I'm like, oh, I need a new cafe. And then I come and, and I'm like, have I have four. Yeah. yeah. But Bear is an exact dupe. So that's that's what I mean. That's another one that I feel like, I don't know, they never had a staple she never had a hero product. She never made an impact. You know what I mean? Like Rare Beauty. Like if well, Rare Beauty went away tomorrow, there's things Rare Beauty does so well that other people would struggle to replicate. But I feel like- You even pointed out too when we were talking about KKW that Mario was a big reason why the brand was doing so well because he was probably Girl, doing Girl, Mario all of made the, that brand. And it when was he went Mario's go, brand with her name on it. Yeah. And so now that he's gone on to make his own brand, which it's very interesting that all the products he's come out with Yes. Suspiciously better than exactly. what she did. Exactly. Had the contour, his brush is detachable. And yep. I like I really do enjoy his product. So I'm like very, very interesting. So it, it's again, I don't think that I don't I don't want to get my hopes up of like, oh yeah, I want this lip liner, but it's like, are we gonna see the same shades or is she just gonna come out with like a nude, a red, yes. a this, yes. a that? Because who's manufacturing this makeup? To claim that your favorites are coming back is a bold statement. Totally. Mark Jacobs Beauty isn't claiming your faves are coming back yet. They yeah. might down the line, but she literally said she's like, your favorites are gonna come back. It's not gonna be the same. I know. You, you know don't... people are gonna pull out their yep, yep. products from years ago and do swatch comparisons and be I like, know. this was a letdown. You're hurting yourself at that point. Rebrand it as something new. Yes. And, uh, House uh, Labs. Next level. Yes. Exactly. House Labs. To do a rebrand, do it like that. Do it like that. Change the shade names. If you're going to do it, redo it. Be new. Yes. Be innovative and be different. Don't but you come know out it's going to be all of the nude, nude packaging, the same as it always was. Oh, and, and it's, it's going to be like that slate marble packaging. Her $100 bathroom trash can that was made of like cement or whatever. It's yeah. going to be that. It's going to be that. Yeah. I know. I'm more excited for Marc Jacobs Beauty just to see what they do with it. Because I think yeah. that as a makeup artist, at least, that had more of an impact on us. KKW yeah. was like a fly by night. Who cares? And I wonder if Marc, Marc Jacobs, a- I'm interested. I I wonder if he'll involved. be involved this time because he was heavily involved in the first one. In the first one, but then when he no longer was involved, it was very apparent. Yes, because so, the image yeah. of the brand started to go like a little too general. Yeah, like even the packaging more so. So totally, you could tell he wasn't as involved. If yeah. you guys share this podcast with your friends and blow us up more than we're 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 doing good, but if you blow us up more than we are, maybe by the time Mark Jacobs Woody comes out, we can have Mark Jacobs on the podcast to talk about all this. Oh. So. So let's say Casey was right in the sense that you would be- I was hate crimed first. You were hate crime first. It wasn't a punch. It wasn't a punch. But Kevin was it was a di- It was a direct, purposeful attack on my fucking vehicle. Yes, on your vehicle. And listen, I mean, it could have been worse, but it felt deliberate and it felt homophobic. And I here's mean, why. Yeah, here's why. <laughs> what else would it be? I was doing a gig. A bridal gig. I packed my car. I yeah. packed it late at night. Uh, it was dark out. So couldn't see the back of my car. And I have like the, I double clicked and my trunk opens up. Yeah. So I'm not reaching for anything. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> I have crank windows. And one of them's held on with double-sided tape. So <laughs> continue. And, yeah. um, you know, I... <laughs> <laughs> open it up, pack my car, close it, whatever, go to bed. I have to be up at like 4.30 in the morning. <clears throat> Hence, it's dark out when I go to my car. Yeah. Don't see it. Okay. Go to the venue, get my shit out. Yeah. The sun is starting to rise. Yeah. Very slightly. It's yeah. still pretty dark out. Yeah. I come out of the venue after I'm done and I see it from half a mile away. Yeah, it was that really- That someone keyed my- f- car and it was very deliberate it's like a huge x oh like it's in like, the back so it, it, it's crazy Deep. because it actually it goes from like it looks like they went down one line and yeah. then went across and made an x yeah. so this wasn't like yeah. oh this was an accident was someone bumped you their door up against your car no i go into this hotel yeah. and mind you i'm already thinking too because i i i, ooh, wow. <laughs> I already looked for the signs in the parking lot to say it's like you know when you go to like a stadium and they say we are not responsible for any like Anything vehicle damage whatever so i don't see any of those signs of the sort mm-hmm. so i'm also looking for security cameras and yeah. i said you know what maybe i can't see them yeah so i go inside and of course the girl is sitting there like this she's so she's typing she's like head down mm-hmm. 
unbothered, like I'm standing there and she looks up and she goes, can I help you? Oh my God. As if I like, I could have been checking into yeah. the hotel. Like yes. I'm bothering her. You're yeah. at work. I know. I know. Like sarcastically. Did you hate when you ask someone like for help in a professional setting like that and you could hear them be like, <sighs> like you ruined their day. I'm like, I'm oh, 100%. sorry. Like, so yeah. then I go back outside and then this guy comes from like the team and he walks me, he goes, oh, let's go take a look. He walks right up and goes, oh my God. Yeah. It's really evident. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, oh yeah, this is no accident. He's like, so someone deliberately did this to you. Then he was like, all right, come with me. Let's go check the cameras. And mm-hmm. I said, okay, like this guy is, that? and he actually was so genuinely sweet too. He was like, I'm really sorry. He's like, that. Yeah. he's like, that is really terrible. Like, I don't know what is wrong with people that they feel the need to do something like this. And I was even thinking too, was I in New York, a parking garage where I might have like, did I cut somebody off? Did I park a certain way? And I was really thinking about all the places I could have been. Maybe that if it wasn't here, where it would have been keyed. And no matter where it is, even if I filed a police report, nothing would have happened. Nothing happens with that. What are they going to do? There's nothing they can do. Yeah, what are they going to do? Because even, and the guy made a really good point to me when he shows me on camera, my, my car wasn't seen on the camera every f-ing camera that they have it was this giant monitor and of yours course, is the blind spot yeah and, uh, of course it was yeah. and then of course they have the giant monitor and then they have like a playboy calendar next to it and i was like ew get ew. me out of this f-ing garage <laughs> yeah yeah and then the guy had the audacity to ask me he goes well do you know anybody here that would have done this to you and i said yes but like i know people here but they wouldn't have keyed my f-ing car yeah yeah like what are you talking about yeah the bride did not like her makeup yeah <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> yeah that was who did it she oh my god well, I think we just solved it. Yeah. Well, I don't get it. I mean, I hate you, but I wouldn't do that. Right. <laughs> I was the one that took the mirror off of your off car. Off my car. Yeah. Believe it or not, that's why I love driving a junker. Like I've had this thing mm. over 14 years. Yeah. Because I could walk out to someone taking a hot load on the roof of my car <laughs> and I would just wait for them to finish. And you would eat it. Yeah. I'd be like, okay. Like there's yeah. nothing. Like if I get hit, I'm like, whatever. You would like, scoop not- ski. Yeah. Scoopski patata yep, that yep. poop up and, and then just, just yeah. right on the ground and say, Thank you. And I clean just up get, after your pets, please. Yeah, yeah. And I just get in the car and drive away. Oh my God. Yeah. That's why I'd be nervous. I have never really had a new car since this one 20 years ago. Did I ever tell you what happened with my old car? No. Bitch. <laughs> Saddle the f*** up. So this is like now going on maybe two years ago. Do you remember that like there was a really bad thunderstorm and it was like almost like record breaking how bad it was for New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of getting This might have been the same thunderstorm that I will never forget. Casey and I saw Oklahoma on Broadway and it didn't really hit like New York. I always have my phone on airplane mode when I'm in the Broadway theater. We get in the subway and right as you have a little bit of service, like before the train goes. Yeah. So I take my phone off airplane mode and all of my family lives out West, like wet West yeah. Jersey. So I take my phone off airplane mode and mind you, nothing's going on in the city. It's a nice night. I get all of a sudden I start to get these slew of texts from my mom, my sisters, my everything. And it's just like, it's coming get in the basement, it ripped the roof off this. Like a tornado was, and I'm like, what? Like I look at Casey and I'm like, I think oh there's god. a tornado in New Jersey. Like, oh my god, that, I And the minute I, exactly I got all the texts, we take about. off in the subway and I can't text anyone back. Yes. And I'm like, what is happening? Well, and that was in the, I want to say that was more summertime, correct? I think so, yeah. Because it must have been around the same time that this storm happened. It was like 6 a.m. and I remember hearing like uh, this crack. And it literally shocked me to my yeah. core. And I was like, I shot up in bed and I was like, what the f was that? And then all of a sudden I hear cracking and like creaking. Cr- and I was Spl- like, wood what? splitting. And I'm literally like, yeah. what oh, the it's f- coming. F- yeah. There's a wire, I guess, to like um It's like Jurassic Park. Oh, you've never seen Jurassic Park, but no. one guy's hiding in like a porta potty and the dinosaur rips the roof off and he's sitting on the toilet, like <laughs> And then it eats him. That's you. <laughs> you're sitting on the toilet. The tree rips the the, the walls off, and you're just like taking dropping it. off a log. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just like. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. And so then I hear like the cable on the side of my house, which is right on my wall, get ripped out because Ooh. it landed on the cable. Yeah. And then of course, right on the back of my car blows uh, out my f- window. Oh no. <laughs> and I, I, <laughs> I just remember going, you've got to be f- kidding me because I almost had a feeling and I said oh Jesus Christ (laughs) yeah yeah on so the police came pretty fast because I Mm -hmm. guess somebody called the police because god forbid like somebody was in that car which 
I could have been. Yeah. Mind you, I'm in a pink robe. Love. With like my hair tied up. And I was like, yes. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. They were like, oh, we just wanted to make sure everything was okay. And I said, I looked at my car and I said, yeah, everything's fine. Everything's great. I said, can you get the tree off of my car? And they were like, "Uh, yeah, we could see that it blew out your window. And that's how I found out. Uh, And I was like, oh, great. It was a mess. And I was, girl. That sucks that someone keyed your car. Oh my God. That ruined your week. No, and like insurance doesn't cover that either. So now that's all out of pocket for me if I want to fix it, which I have to. Yeah, yeah. At the end of my lease. lease, I know. If I don't buy out my car, like it's just. I, it's too stressful for me. I, I know. can't. This isn't your week. On that note, I think we're going to yes. uh, hop on over to purchase or pass. Yes. All right. <laughs> we're back with purchase or pass. Adele, is that you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Strange. Okay, let's dive on in here. We have Anastasia. Yeah, so first up, we have the Anastasia Fall Romance Palette. So this Anywhere, Trend Mood, Anastasia. I hate when they don't put the price, but I would gather it's going to be on par with their 50, higher at 55, 55. I think. That's normally their like newer whatevers. Yeah, their newer um, pressed pigment palettes. I have to say, this is probably the most excited for an Anastasia palette I've been just titillated in the past four. I'm not getting goosebumps, but I'm fine. <laughs> yes. Here's right off the bat. Top row, Stuntina Aguilera. Stunning. I love this. So now I'm going to take a page out of your book and go to this bottom row. I know. This. It's the mats. This is. Okay, so here we go. They dropped the ball with the mats. what is this Mayron makeup, how to make a bruise palette? (laughs) Yes. How to do zombie makeup, girl. I know. Because you know when you take a shadow this dark of like these dark deep purples and greens even you're going to pack this on the eye it's going to be subculture part two mark my words you're right everything is going to look deeper and darker Darker. on the eye then it's not going to give deep purple a deep aubergine big aubergine because that's the thing with looking at this is like out of these shades no you have that beautiful uh pink shimmer and purple shimmer and gold shimmer and even that duo-y kind of greenish gold yeah the champagne what mats are you pairing them with? And you also, have that, too, like, can we stop doing the poopy doopy brown with the gold glitter? Because the gold glitter don't I know, last. I know, and I can't stand it. It's the, the well, gold glitter comes right I now. know. We're one, the, the brown in the top, top corner. Yeah. It's like a, bra- a, t- a typical brown, Crayola brown, but it has the gold shimmer in it. And so what am I supposed to use that as? I'm not using that as a shimmer. And that looks ridiculous. you got to pack that on the lid, let's say, maybe as a smoky eye. you got to blend it out. The gold shimmer is gone. 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 And if, but if you try to blend it enough to be a matte transition, there's going to be gold glitter f- flying everywhere. Like it's just not going to look clean. It won't. It's not the move. And I almost want to take this on a, 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 with a different approach when we do purchase or pass. Yeah. When I will, I'm going to say, I will probably pass on this for the price. I agree. I love this. But what I would do differently if I were sitting there, I would take out that brown with the gold glitter. I would take out maybe that deep, deep purple and that other, the far right color. Why are there also two matte greens that look the same? I would take what out that doing? far deep one, leave the other one, and then the color left to it, it's, I think it's called leather. Yes. Take out leather, girl. Leather. What is, that is some Mushy baby food. Baby food. Pureed. Gerber. Yeah. yeah, not the Gerber. Oh, yeah. God. I would take that out and I would give me a solid black. Yes. Give me a solid black in, in there. Also, this half shimmer. The whole bottom row. You know, I'm just going to say the whole bottom row, bottom row, row get rid of it. The whole bottom row is awful. And that brown. I would do, so I would have done a warm transition to replace leather to go with the golds. Mm-hmm. Keep one green. To go with the duochrome but green, give me a gold, real green, a real green. The third one in, I think it's uh, crimson, which that's not crimson, that's brown. Um, crimson should have a reddish hue. I would have gone with a darker purple. The next one over to have a transition for the pink and the purple shimmers and the top row, I would have did a pinky something, but, but like fall, think fall. So like it would have been this. It would have been more not hot bar. This. This looks more hot Barbie in person, but whenever I'm editing, it's more, it's deeper. Natasha Denona, hot, deep, hot, deep, dull brown. D- yeah, yeah. yeah. And then going over, I would have did it black. Yeah. And I would have did, especially for fall, I don't hate 
the concept of this uh, rusty. orangey rusty. <laughs> Same. But give me, replace that brown with the gold shimmer with a, bl- like this gold here. Blinding, the third, a blinding bronze. rusty bronze with a matte that matches it. To have that warmer, almost uh, like um, modern uh, renaissance. Yeah. The, the, remember that, the orangey one that was that in that? Burnt. Yeah, the that burnt. burnt. It was called Burnt. Yeah. Burnt Sienna. Burnt Sienna. Yes. yes. Wow, I can't believe I remember that. Not you. Wow. You always remember those things. Yeah. Wow. Th- this God. is so close. This was so close, but they f***ed it up with the mats. And yeah. we, you and know, you know here, what, you know what this gives them. me? This gives me Hocus Pocus 2 collection from ColourPop, but playing it too safe. 100%. Yeah, they did it better. Yeah, they did it better. ColourPop does it better. And these indie brands, they always hit it for I me. know, I know. And I feel like they they tried to do fall, and it, we're so it's damn so close. close. And you know what? I love, and I will say I love, especially for fall, the fact that they went fall, but the representation and the entire kind of theme was this deep mysterious purple because people don't do that everyone just goes pumpkin <laughs> spice and everything's so, orange for exactly on the eye and i'm so like please this stop. was so oh my god it was so close it was yeah. so close but it's for the price especially you got work judging it harder and it's a pass yeah. it's a shame it is a pa- i do want to feel it i do want to see it in person yeah because my my issue with these two is that their swatches online always look more exciting. Yeah. And then when I see it in store, it's always more dull and, and boring. with Anastasia, you never know if the mats, which again, other than a disgusting leather cigarette shade, there's no transitions. Every other mat is dark as hell. So what the hell are you supposed to start with? Am I supposed to put, I'm supposed to put one of those, the, the, either the rusty brown with shimmer in it or crimson, as my transition and then pack a, a, a pink shimmer on top. What the hell's happening? Yeah. They want shimmer from there's no execution. The yeah. There's no foresight of what looks are going to be created with this. No. And I always love, even in, you can kind of see here with this, what the hell is this? Oh, with the campaign image. Look at this, 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 that's What's crimson. That, where's that cranberry that shade? That, that ain't crimp. That ain't that. That ain't that crimson. Well, and you know what's crazy to me is that two shadows. And I would love to be on set for these looks because you know they're dipping into other palettes from Anastasia. Girl, tell tell the people because okay, so you want a little tea right now? Yeah, is that back in the day Smashbox Studios Mm -hmm. was the hub for makeup photo shoots? Yes, a lot of brands that were not Smashbox used to use their studios. But to use their studio, you have to use five products worth of Smashbox. So when you were doing makeovers and doing your yeah. campaign images <gasps> for other third-party brands, you were using Smashbox on them. So very funny that you like to claim that it's all one thing when it's not. Wow. That's why you got to share the pod, guys. No one's giving tea like this. No. This and is it's crazy. That's and, it's, and it was people from Smashbox that used yeah. to tell me that, that used to be at the studios when they these other brands. Yes. And I'm not saying Anastasia. No, but But yes. I'm saying other brands that used to go there. So you don't know. They're probably using one of the Norvina palettes that has like maybe a brighter cranberry red to totally pop it up. totally because so, they want to make money, so they're going to sell you on two palettes. I know. So anyway, so close, but so pass. close, but no cigar. All right. Next up, we have the YSL All Hours Concealer. Pass. I didn't move. Did you move? Let me tell you this. Everyone and their mother was like, uh, the the All Hours Foundation went viral, and it Recently? was on. A, when it like a couple of months, like maybe a year ago, or like in the past, whatever. When they reformulated, yes, the launch of the all hours concealer okay. uh, foundation, which I have somewhere, which I regret buying, but it had like amazing reviews. Mama, I don't get it. It no matter what I did, I bought this the Givenchy Dior Gucci. Gucci is for people who are as oily as like there will be blood oil mining. Like it is in, I've never had a more matte foundation in my life than that foundation. You have to be the penguin covered in the <laughs> Gulf oil spill. Girl, getting it, a dawn bath. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you well, might as well just put Gucci foundation. 100%. Oh, the, the penguin. Uh, oh my God. Givenchy stunning. That almost reminds me of like what the REM beauty from last week, but a little bit better. You have you ever used the Gucci foundation? No. Uh, Givenchy? No. You would fucking love it. It is literally like, really? that was what, out of all the high-end stuff, that's what blew me away first, but it's a little 
too natural that my nose can't handle it because of my oil. So it's like it di- it would be a little shiny at the end of the day. But mm. for you, my God, this foundation is stunning. The, okay, the Givenchy. I'll have to try it. For me, my Dior love, Forever Matte. This is I love my ride or die. I would take a bullet for this foundation. This was the winner. That. This all hours texture nightmare. It exposed every texture. It looks dry. What? It looks. I don't I like get it. it. I don't get it. Maybe I got to revisit and see if I really like it. Because I remember the original formula and the new formula. And I felt like I liked both. And my other gripe, Givenchy and Dior, the colors. Like, I love the Dior. This is in 2CR. Cool rose. So we're getting cool, cool, cool. Oh, honey, to miss. To die for. Miss all hours is yellow boots. Mama Simpsons. And even yellow on top boot. of it, things that are cool are as Look yellow at this as this image. Can be. It looks yellow. It's insane. So basically, I said all that to say I have no faith in this because the and foundation. What are the- Look at that jump. Look, Look at the jump between LC1, LC2, and then all of a sudden LC5. Where's LC3 and 4? And look at the jump between MW9 and uh, DN1. We are literally going from medium. All of those medium shades might as well be the same thing. Can we talk? And then we're jumping all the way up to dark deep there's nothing in between can we talk about the model on the left that the concealer on her forehead is quite literally yellow and they're exposing themselves she is she is porcelain and they're using yellow yellow so this and and to add insult to injury i wrote it down this is 38 dollars girl no 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 pass absolute pass if it wasn't clear Next up, we have the Patrick Ta Major Dimensions 3. So this is an all matte palette. We have, as you can see, all mattes, all transitions, really. And then the last two on the corner there, not the light shades, but the deeper shades, that is a cream black and a cream brown. I don't know. When I first saw this, I have to, as God is my witness, I swear to God, guys, and this is, again, we're psychopaths. This is you with the uh, Mario ethereal. I have bought both of these. The major dimensions one and two. Mm-hmm. I've never used them once. Okay. I've never used them once. I don't know why. So this to me is a great staple palette. Mm-hmm. And the only thing tipping it is I love that they're including creams because that to me makes this more uh, user friendly for a makeup artist. Mm-hmm. Because if someone wants a black smoky eye, you're getting that cream base to it. However, this palette is $70. $70 for mats. So this is tough. What's your take? I have major dimensions one. Yes. The original, the more like rose gold, not the pinky tone one, but yeah. the more like neutral one. Love. I will say when I saw this with the matte black, that matte white, that like more yeah. creamy color. I love the range. It's the price point that gets it's me. The price point. Um, but I'm, I love it. it it's, and I will I say this because listen, this. you and I are always kind of hemming and hawing when it comes to eyeshadow palettes about how like nothing like the Anastasia, nothing really hits the mark. So I would say if you're somebody that really loves neutral eyeshadows, the formula of this is stunning. They're and you're getting amazing. those creams. So if you do ever want to do a smoky, you have that base, which we're all talking because about. Because a black base exactly. for me, we've talked about it, yes. how important that is. Yes. So Love that. It really is, if you want to spring, this is it. And then I'm a big proponent of, and you're a big proponent of your own kind of thing, but I, I, what I'm saying is, is you get something like this, then you stock up on, for Johnny's recommendations, you stock up on Moira Liquid Eyeshadows, oh, Liquid showers. Eyeshadows Flirty Birdie by Elf. Kevin, you stock up on the uh, Moon Dust, um, <gasps> Urban Decay, Urban Decay Ooh, uh, Mary. ColourPop, Super Shock Shadows. You have, that's yes. it, man. That's it. So yeah. it really is a great concept. It's giving yeah. what Danessa Merricks from last episode gave of the simplicity of an artist palette. Oh, yeah. I mean, the price point is painful. If the creams weren't in there, this would be a pass. 100%. But because the creams are in there with the formula and... I can even tell the two transitions next to the white from a makeup artist standpoint is that white is great for white people just to set the concealer or the whatever. But above it, that yellowy thing, if you've ever noticed that, that's to set, that's almost a translucent for deeper skin tones. Then the two next over, you know those aren't going to pull too cool. Those are perfectly neutral, the two in from that. You know what's almost funny too, just at first glance, it almost looks like the top is more warm and the bottom is more more cool. cool. 
you are 100% right. So I got to say, even though this is $70 and this pains me because I, you know I hate expensive shit, I know. I'm going to give this a purchase because I would purchase of those too. creams. It are really, the other ones that expensive? Yes. Yes. I guess I bought it when I was still at Sephora. So it's like when you're not paying exactly. full price. Full but price. It's a different story. Wow. So, And I would say maybe wait for a Sephora sale coming up, but this will probably be sold out. My gosh. Who knows? Is, I'm hoping... When is usually the Sephora sale? April, November. November. Okay, so this... So this is going to sell out. Who knows if they'll be restocked by November? Well, and because now Sephora does things too where they do like random things, like if they do like friends and family, but mm-hmm. you have to know people. Oh, friends and family already passed. Yes. Oh, damn. So maybe it'll be maybe it'll be at the sale, but if so, you can't swing it, but I am going to give I this a purchase. This. I would purchase it too. I give them a lot of credit. This is actually very beautiful. And it's actually, for as basic as it is, very intriguing. I know. I know. I'm very God, into it. Those transitions are stunning. Yeah. That sienna color, this one, the bottom corner, the the orange. <gasps> now, that's hold what I on. wanted in the Anastasia now, to go with the second. rust. Okay. Because now we're looking at, now we just. Swatches. We're looking at the swatches and. I have a problem Kevin's now. changing his tune. So okay. I have a little bit of a problem. Okay. I think I would still purchase this, but now it's eh, getting a little iffy for me because those top two colors, the one looked so white. White. Yeah. Where Mama now all of a sudden it's peach. peach. You're right. Which again, all this shit is so photoshopped. So God only knows because that's the thing too. Even when we look at the Lunar Beauty setting powders, which is another thing we're going to do on this episode. Mama, Photoshop City. So I just feel like these things are so hard. You know what I mean? They get Hmm. stock Photoshop images of these swipe powders. They Photoshop uh, eyedropper pick the color. You know what I mean? That's not really the the color. No, that's not from the palette. This is all Photoshop. Oh, and also too, when you see lip swatches on a lot of brands, and there are brands that I'm not going to call them out, but when they have cookie cutter, you could tell by the way that the lip is shaped that they paste the color. Yes, they just had the color. But yeah, so this is Photoshop. I would honestly go more by the palette itself. So... Yeah, I would still it's gonna be a I purchase, would purchase, but go but in the store and see if these work swatch for you, it out, yeah. et cetera. Yes. All right. Next up, we have the Made by Mitchell. These are the Carve cases, all creams. We have it light, medium, and deep. I got to tell you, I am <laughs> obsessed with this. I'm going to reel you in. Really? Oh, God, you're going to ruin it for me? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Okay. Hit me with it. Hit me with your best shot. What is one thing that you hate about cream products? Goopy, doopy, slippy, slatty cream that evaporates in the sun. Motherfucker. It is yeah. wet. Son of a It is bitch. wet, wet, wet. Wet mud. <laughs> it yeah. is wet mud on the no. skin that you are contouring with. Girl, I mean, the colors are beautiful. Uh, the color stories it of is all three are to die for. Literally to die for. Look I want the deep. The deep I is in the center. so Bad. I wanted we have them light, so bad. Which the blush colors, amazing. The four blush, then the contours. We have cool, warm, everything. Contour, bronzer, medium, same thing. Absolutely stunning medium shades. Mm-hmm. The contours and, and bronzers are perfect. And the deep, look at that. To give a black like that, the versatility for deep skin would be unbelievable. But that is devastating that it's goopy, goopy cream. As I goop on more gloss. I, yeah. So do you think it's good for dry skin though, or is it um, still? I have very mixed emotions about this because I got so excited and I love the um, the continuity of the shades are matching to the original contours and the original yes. Blursh. Or whatever, yes, which, which I hate, I hate that, that name. name. Yes, Blursh. Blursh. <laughs> but I love, I love the coordination of all the shades. I love <sighs> the... The, the idea color behind story. this. I mean, you get four blushes, four contour bronzers. Like, I mean, I know it's just that formula is so it's too really wet, wet looking on the skin. I know. And then you have to think about how much powder you're gonna have to go put over. on. Yeah, because I'm you sorry. just showed me a video of him putting it on, and honestly, it looks so wet that like I would even say it, this wouldn't even be good if you have like fine lines and wrinkles, like mature skin, because it's just gonna settle because it's so it's not like the which i've talked about it's not like the new Trixie uh bronzing sticks that they dry like down. dry down yeah. almost like to a cream to powder that it's not gonna budge these look really goopy goopy wet yeah that's a and shame. also too because it would be hard to do this if the formula was almost too exposed i'm gonna say where it was maybe yes. too hard and then it's like you got to dig your brush in i know it's too hard you got to pull too much so open pot 
creams like this are very hard to do for the face. Yeah. Because it needs to either be sealed like that, like, mm, and that's like a thing. Like a cap or something. Yes, like this. You but know, this where is obviously just. Obviously, this is snapping down and it's not exposed to the air. It's giving me Halloween grease paint makeup. Yes. Like grease paint, theater makeup, theater You're makeup, right. wet, wet, wet theater makeup. And then you yeah. got to powder it down within an inch of your life. Like, I'm just like, I, I know I love the concept. Oh. It's just, it's a miss because, and you know, what's arguably kind of weird to me, you know, his cream color cases that look yes. like they make up forever. Why are those less radiant than these? Agreed. Yes, because I think maybe his thought process is like that. Those are more concealer foundation. -y, so it's more of that. Skin, oh, to do like this. eyeliner and that's stuff with them too. Oh, it's bright colors. Yeah, he has so a that's what one. maybe it's that. It's more like a paint. Yeah, like eyeliner a or whatever. Use pigment. Yes, where this he he thought. Okay, I'm making cream bronzers, contours, and blushes. And Let's make them radiant. Goopy, radiant, to, and then you powder them down. And I mean, listen, I, would I know. Love, and the only unfortunate thing with this brand too, you can't find it anywhere. I know. So I, when I went on the, these are actually pulled from the website, not trend mood. Um, and, uh, you can get it on beauty bay now. Yeah, so I just but, wish I could see them in person. Exactly. So I would say, I don't know. It's so hard because like the concept and the color story is an absolute purchase for me. Even the price, I think it's us dollar. It's only 37 99 wow. for eight shades. So everything about it is a purchase, but I would say for me, the only thing that's making it a, a, a potential purchase is watch a lot of go to makeup. I mentioned, Instagram maybe or social media and watch him put this on someone and just look yeah. at the texture because these are new so he's going to post a lot of videos about it and see the texture on the skin yeah. and kind of ask yourself like okay the way this is radiating and shining and the way even on the brush the way it looks on the back of his hand is that a little bit too soft of a formula for me or mm. do you need something that's a little bit more has a more dry down purchase with a clause yeah for me agreed yeah I agree so next up we have the lunar beauty lunar versal setting powder <sighs> manny loves a tongue twisting pun right what was the uh, lanny and mora was the lipsticks in their collab it's always something that i have to be like lunar versal like it's never it never rolls off the tongue right over it what is that yes and honestly and even the name of like the podcast fool fantasy and then it Full was like coverage the yeah Oh, and then Fool Fantasy was the name of the makeup collection. Was the name of the makeup collection, yeah. Fool, Fool Fantasy. Yeah. I know, I know. And Lunar Versal. It was like, oof, when I was reading it, it just doesn't. It, it literally sounds like an eight-year-old that like should know better talking. And then he's <laughs> yes. like spitting out some dumb shit. Yes. So this is Sorry, a new I'm just like... Lunar Versal setting powder. Which we have on. We have on. And it comes in the pink Translucent light, translucent medium, and translucent deep. This is $28. This photo is making the deep look a little lighter than it is. I feel like it I was is deeper. Say. No, and in the things, I'll put the swatches of them. It was a little deeper, but we have it on, and we kind of are maybe keeping this tradition going from last week's episode where we try one of the products that we put in purchase or pass. So we've had this on now for almost two hours. I haven't looked at my face, honestly, in Should two I grab hours. The mirror? Maybe. Yeah, let's do it now. Let's do a little wear test. So two hours later, Let's see. Because I looked in the bathroom and um, I don't love. So I will say initially. My under eyes look, it's the same as the milk for me. The milk uh, makeup eclipse, poor eclipse powder from last week. My under eyes look dry. It's coming off my nose. And this, I'm wearing this. Uh, unlike last week, I had the milk pore eclipse setting powder on top of the new REM beauty foundation. And the foundation wasn't for me either. Cause I'm a little too oily. So it was kind of a disaster across the board. But with this, I wore my Revlon full coverage matte foundation that this shit lasted through a Beyonce concert in like a hundred degree heat. Yeah. Like look at my nose up close. Like you can see my redness. The all. foundation yeah, is it's off, off already. It's off. And I'm not gagging. Cause even when I put this powder on, the you weren't pink, impressed either. I the pink did nothing. I know. So it's almost too trans. It's transparent. Yes. Where there's nothing to it. Where like one size or <gasps> Danessa Myricks or any of the other pink powders on the market uh -huh. will give you more coverage. I know. And more density. And I got to. Yes. So it'll actually do what it's supposed to do. Huda Beauty too. The cherry blossom. Oh, God almighty. Amazing. And Givenchy. Expensive. But yes. Mary. I, I know. Mean, like where is the kimchi chic? Pink powder. Because the Ivender 
Yes. A- another name. The lavender. It's, yes. It's ivory lavender. And then Kim they have has the lavender. lavender. Yes. And which, then there's the ivory lavender mix. And wow. I was like, ooh. I know. And I got to say, because we've toyed around with the idea, too, of doing a retroactive purchaser pass, like things that we passed on in the past. Oh, that's weird. That we ended up, yeah, maybe liking, maybe talking about it. And I got one right here, y'all. We passed on the one size pink powder because <gasps> my thing was this. The original translucent powder I just felt like was way too heavy. And then the pink powder, I was like, if it's that heavy on the under eyes, which is what a pink powder is for, yeah. mama. Amazing. I've been using this shit. I got to take it back. I'm sorry, Patrick. This pink I know, powder, I, I don't know if it's a different formula than if it's lighter mm. than the t- regular translucent powder. But this shit, even all over the face for me, is keeps everything matte, keeps wow. everything amazing. It is unbelievable. The one hmm. size pink powder. Yeah. So love that. I don't know about this. Pass. Pass. I know. It's not doing it's it for not, me. No. No way. No It just looks way. dry and... It's yeah, not, I'm not loving it. It's not it. doing anything spectacular. And no. I'm fine. Totally. All right. And last but not least, we have the ColourPop Haunted Mansion Collection. Purchase. <laughs> Kevin was like friggin' freaking out over this. Oh yeah. my God. I saw this this morning. Yes. I saw you like the post when I was screenshotting it on Trend Mood. I was, I'm yeah. screaming. Okay, so everything about it, the glow-in-the-dark jelly, that is so fierce because it's probably face and body, not for like yes, eyes or whatever. Yes, body, yeah. Um, Which we have, yeah. So we have the Foolish Mortals eyeshadow palette. They have four new Super Shock shadows, this glow-in-the-dark body glitter. Oh, and then God. it seems like we also have three liquid lipsticks. And a glossy lip. And a glossy, a gloss. Um, but it's like a sheer purple. So that, I mean, truthfully, I'm going to like wrap rattle this off because this is so easy. <laughs> that like nude pinky liquid lip and the purple one, this like brown oxblood color. I feel like the colors we of have the liquid it. lips yeah. could have been a little bit different, a little bit more exciting. Yes. Um, but I'm interested to see them in person because again, this is clearly Photoshop, so it's yeah. hard to tell. That super shock shadow in that blue. Yes. Mary Dugan. Is beautiful. I am going to throw up. <laughs> Uh, yes. Get me off this white carpet. It's coming out of me like lava. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. That blue. Yeah. Imagine like just like a halo black smoky eye with like the blue in the middle and just, I know. oh my God. And this palette and everything. I love the color story. I feel like I this have is gonna... an issue with the mats in this. I feel like there's no oh. same as Anastasia. There's no bright mats to counterbalance the shimmers. What are you wearing that blue with? Because I love the blue shimmer in the center. And the and you're color underneath the, it too. That's what I mean. And even the purples next to the blue, <gasps> the kind of tea there. And even if you want to use that super shock shadow, what color are you putting on first? I'm not using the mattes. I know. That's what I mean. So I'm not buying a $24 palette for four colors. I'd rather just buy, and I think it was oh, also stupid to do no. a better version of that blue in a super shock shadow single. There's now there's literally no incentive to buy the palette because on top of it, the super shock shadow, they also gave you a purple. All of the bet, like, yes, that dual chrome, but not worth $24 for one dual chrome, which I guarantee the white super shock shadow looks there like it has, has a, a purple, uh, has a green shift to it. It looks like it exactly. has a shift. They literally made super shocks of the f- best colors in the palette, made the mattes boo boo horrible. I would never buy this palette. I would buy the Super Shock shadows. If you like this color story, I'd buy the Super Shocks. But you're going to have to use your own matte sh- eyeshadows anyway because everything in there is like <sighs> wow. mauve, dusty brown, cigarette ash, or purple mauve, cigarette ash. Sorry. <laughs> the only reason I'm saying this, I love ColourPop's Halloween collections. Me too. The Hocus Pocus collection last year was because they had the bright mattes. They had an orange, but they had an orange mat. They had a green fierce. mat. They had a purple mat. They had all the corresponding mats yeah. to go with the shimmers. This, why do we have all these grays and browns and and like yeah, are they dusty trying to, lavenders? Have you seen those things where it's like you take a movie scene and then it gives you the color? There's a word for it. Yes. I forget I, what you're I'm talking about. I'm forgetting what it yes. is, but you know what I'm talking totally. about. It almost looks like they paused the movie. Yes. And literally. And color picked. And color picked everything yeah. in the scene because it's like, I get the aesthetic that they were going for, but it's just the mats are a miss. The shimmers are a plus. Yes. But again, like you said, for $24, if you're going to get four colors that you're going to Which gonna you really could get love. in Super Shocks. Which are going to be a better formula. So that, you know what I mean? It's like, I would just hands down, I would I would pass on the Damn. palette and I would purchase the Super Shock Shadows if you like the color. Yeah, and the glow-in-the-dark gel. I mean, Absolutely. and honestly, here's my little, my issue. Your with gripe? Yeah, with glow-in-the-dark products. Yeah. They're always a little, uh, 
weird looking during the day. When oh, you're yeah. Like, that probably smells like Hudson River chemicals. Yeah. Like bi- biohazard the that, waste. The fish that comes out of it with legs. Yes. The yeah, fish that, that comes out of land. the land. Yeah, the yeah. fish that comes out of the Hudson Smoking walking. a cigarette. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I'm from New York. Yeah. I'm yeah. walking here. I'm walking here. Get out of my way. Yeah, that is that. It smells like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. Woo! I mean, but yeah. I would still get it because for Halloween, like if you're, you know, that's fun. That's so I fun. I would wear this on like my body for Halloween. Absolutely. And I'm pretty sure the Super Shock shadows are $9 each. The gl- body glitter is 10 The palette oh, wow. was 24 More reason why I would pass. The liquid lipsticks were 10 I would pass on the liquid lips. I'm not a fan of liquid lips. Yeah. I- and that's the collection. I don't know. I feel like this would be one of those things for me where I would want to get the whole collection and possibly return some pieces. Yeah. I think I would want to go in store, swatch everything, but I don't know. There's something about this palette that I do want to try it. Yeah. But the mats, you're right, are a letdown. I know. And it sucks to me because the palette, that was the most exciting thing even about the Hocus Pocus was the palette really is the 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 backbone of the collection. You know what I mean? That has the graphics and the aesthetic yeah. and the whole nine. So to not get the palette in this collection, you're basically just buying Super Shock Shadows. But I don't know. There's something about if you're going to pay for the licensing of these collections and then you're going to come out with something that's a flop Tina bestie. I know. Girl. I know. And honestly, I'm getting a little sick of their other collections. Naruto, Powerpuff Girls. Oh, I know. Colourpop at this point works for Warner Brothers. Like Colourpop and Re- Makeup Revolution literally don't do collections well, if it's not licensed TV wild. or movies. Oh, Wet that's wild another one. Elmo. I know. It's all licensed TV shows and movies. I'm over it. And so. with this, I would say like the Haunted Mansion, this new like remake of the Haunted Mansion. Mansions. First of all, the original Haunted Mansion, maybe I'm aging myself, but like 2004? The Eddie Murphy, yeah, was not that long ago that we need a remake of the Haunted Mansion. <gasps> oh, and that's right. They did redo it. Oh, yeah, wait. the original Haunted Mansion. Talk with, about Flop Tina. That came out and nobody's talking about it. Th- that's what I'm saying. So you just made my point. Unlike Hocus Pocus, Hocus Pocus sells itself. I would buy anything with Hocus Pocus on it. You know what I mean? It's a cult favorite. We're Haunted, Haunted Mansion. Mansion. Unless you're a Eddie Disney, Murphy, which, unless you're a Disney yeah, fanatic, which I feel like is who they're going after. But uh, Haunted Mansion, True. even the the Eddie Murphy one, is not that much of a cult classic. And this remake yeah. is like, why is this even happening? So, in my opinion, for this to sell, it has to be stellar, and it's it's yeah. just not for me. So the only thing I would purchase is the body glitter glow in the dark, which I think is super unique. And super shocks. And the super shocks. Yeah, but Fair. everything else is a pass. I think I agree. Say it. I agree. Say it. <laughs> I would what do you? I would purchase the glitter gel and the shadows and pass on the rest, you fucking whore. I'll tell you all if he purchases it because he's an addict and he will. So, yeah, you pull it out from behind the chair. You already have it. And I'm like, and she's in the studio. Can <laughs> yes, you come out here, yeah. please? You may, Like Maury, I talk yeah. shit about her and you're like, come on out. We'll Jerry, say it to her face. Jerry Springer. Well, she's backstage and we have her here and she's heard the whole conversation. Why don't you come on out? Do you know one of my, fi- one of my favorite things I ever heard Lucille Ball used to do? She was like such a pisser, like at things. RuPaul said this. Yes. And he Norton. used to, yes, and he used to, she used to uh, have these big dinner parties and someone would get up and go to the bathroom and on their way back into the room, she would pick someone at the table and gesture as though the person at the table was talking about the person coming back and they'd walk in the door and she'd be like, we'll say it to their face. Yeah. That is iconic. I, like, <laughs> to die for. Talk yeah. about stirring the f***ing pot. I that is that. iconic. I want I to do that, that to people. That and then the other best quote I heard was uh, Joan Crawford with, uh, and Betty Davis. Betty Davis was asked about because she was asked about Joan Crawford forever after doing Baby Jane and uh, someone asked her after Joan Crawford died like how do you feel like now that Joan Crawford died and Betty Davis goes my mother always said to say something good about the dead Joan's dead good (laughs) iconic how funny is that oh always said to say something good about the dead Joan's dead Good. Good. <laughs> yeah. Work, bitch. Half your eulogy's written for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Work. Yeah. Love that. Alrighty, guys, that is it for a brand new episode of Beautiful and Bothered. Stay tuned next week for a brand new episode. 
Make sure to subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Leave us a five-star review if you can. And if you'd like your episode one day early, make sure to subscribe to the official Beautiful and Bothered YouTube channel. Wherever you are, I hope you are happy, safe, and healthy. And remember, you are beautiful. I have never done it that clean. That was one shot. That was one shot. I think we got it. I think we got it. (laughs) 